the question is, um, when it comes to uh, you know tracking whether we're we're making progress in our business, of course, people usually think, well, am I making more money? So income is obviously one metric. But besides income, besides am I getting more money? Am I getting more clients? How how else do we track? Because there are certain things that are longer term, like writing blog posts or making videos or um, working on our joyful productivity that, you know, we, we should, it would be nice to have a quicker feedback loop rather than saying <laughs> a, a yearly check, am I doing better <laughs> in my content or in my joyful productivity? So I do actually have a tool for this. Now, it's not a tool that I, I'm sharing in this course. It's in my, uh, well, um, it, it's, uh, let me just go ahead and share my screen here. This tool is uh, shared in my business planning class. So this is a bit of a preview for those of you who, uh, let me go ahead and reshare my screen, just make sure that, um, that it's uh, viewable here. Uh, let me just go ahead and, so. okay, apologize. Okay, so yeah, so this, this is the tool. Um, and if you, uh, you know, I, I don't have time to talk through everything right now because this is the, um, there's the basic version of it. There's the, there's the medium version and then there's the advanced version of it. Um, but I'll just do the medium version real quick just to kind of give you what's possible. Profit is usually what people only think about um, uh, in business. And uh, especially small businesses with so much going on, uh, you, especially if you're just a self-employed person, you know, maybe profit is the only thing you can track. Some of you might not even be tracking that. So <laughs> this could be a reminder. Hmm, maybe I should start tracking profit, meaning on a monthly basis, what money is coming in, what money is going out, and then therefore, what's the difference? You know, uh, Some of you might be tracking number of client inquiries. Um, which is good. Uh, you know, some of you and notice that George, where is the tracking on how many clients do I have right now, or how many sessions do I have per week? Well, this it's more sophisticated just to track profit, to be honest with you, and and, and it's more sophisticated just to track these two. You know, number of client inquiries. Obviously, the more you increase it, the more naturally the more client sessions you have, the more clients you currently have, and then the profit is tracking. It's a sophisticated metric of incoming and outgoing and sort of the difference uh, be between those. So um, those are kind of like very typical uh, business metrics to track. And then um, some of the other ones you might want to track are, you know, in, in our class here on, on TLC, joy, your joy of productivity is basically a metric on scoring this from zero to 10 on a monthly basis. Um, how do you feel that it's going with your joy? And like, you know, this is a qualitative measure. It's like, how do you feel organized? Do you feel energized? Do you feel balanced? Uh, do you feel productive? Do you feel calm and joyful when you are working? These are kinds of, you know, and, and the advanced section has different ways of, of, of tracking that, 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 you know, some ideas. But anyway, this is an overall each month how are you feeling about it? I mean, you can always, of course, add, add a note to each cell. Now, again, this tool is in the business planning class. If you, uh, I, I really, I'm not trying to sell you this class, but I really actually require all my clients to take this anyway. Um, I, I if I could require every solopreneur in the world to take it, I would, because I really believe in it. It's a really, I think it's really important thing that I put together, <laughs> if I could say so myself. So anyway, I, I encourage you to, to consider taking it if you want. But if you, if you didn't take it, these metrics hopefully will give you an idea of how to track this stuff. Uh, you can just set up a tool like this for yourself, a spreadsheet like this, or a document, however you want to do it. This is just each month and then each metric, basically. Joyful productivity. Uh, second one I, I like to track is basically how many people are you reaching with your content? How many people each month are you reaching with your content? And I just recommend for simplicity, you track one place. Do you want to track Instagram? Great. Wonderful. With Instagram, you can go to your Instagram app. 
Okay, you can, I'm not gonna share my screen right now because I'm not on Zoom with my phone, but if you go to Instagram, click on uh, insights, go to your profile, click on insights. Okay, and then insights, instead of last seven days on the top left, you can click on last seven days and select last 30 days and then click update. I should have done this on the phone. I'm sorry, I didn't, can't show you, but, uh, and then you could see how many accounts you reached in the last 30 days. Got it? Instagram, for your profile, click on insights. Okay, click instead of last seven days on the top left, click last 30 days, click update and accounts reached. Now, um, for those of you who uh, use a Facebook business page and you use Facebook ads on a regular basis, then you go to your Facebook business page, um, click on insights, and then instead of last seven days, change it to the last 28 days and then post three. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So if I go to my Facebook business page, this is what I can show you on screen. Instagram is so mobile heavy that I can't show you that on the desktop, but Instagram or Facebook business page, you click on insights on the left-hand side. And then you click on, instead of last seven days, you click on last 28 days, okay? And then you scroll down and look at post reach. So in the past 28 days, I reached almost 34,000 people. Now, some of these are duplicated people, meaning it's not 34,000 unique people. So this is kind of a murky number, but at least we don't, it doesn't matter literally what the number means. We just want to see it not go dramatically down, 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 down. Hopefully we are seeing it over a course of a quarter, we're seeing it more or less go up. You know, every three months or so on average, it's kind of going up at least a little bit post reach. Okay. So that's what that means. And then um, number of market research conversations, um, especially for those of you who are in the core program, you, you know about this. It's so important to stay in touch. Before my business was humming along like it currently is, um, I was doing at least two market research conversations per month. I recommend that for all of you, probably, unless your business is already like, okay, it's like, it's already really humming along. Like I, I know exactly what I'm doing every day, every month. And it's the sales are more or less the same or growing every month. If you're not there yet, if you don't have enough clients yet or an abundance of a waiting list yet, so then maybe that's a good way of saying it. If you don't have an abundance of a waiting list yet, I recommend doing at least two market research conversations every month, every month. That's what I, I did. I, I did four a month, in fact, when I was first going for the first year. And then I petered down to two a month. And now I'm, I'm, I'm doing group market research conversations every, every other month. And so because my, you know, my systems are humming along. But uh, the core program really covers market research conversations for those who are interested. Um, okay. So, all right. And then the next metric is how many calls to action did you post? What's a CTA? It's a call to action and call to action examples include a pre-launch sale for a program or a course or something like that, making a Facebook event for a course. Um, and I, I sell mostly courses, so this is why it's all, but you could be invitation to a one-on-one -on -one sample session or exploratory call. So that's a good question. When was the last time you posted to your social media an invitation to your audience, your network, your friends, to please contact you about an exploratory call for your services. When was the last time you did that? <laughs> you did that. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh, I don't remember the last time I did that. This is why it's a metric. This is why we measure these things. If we measure them, we're likely to manage them. How many CTAs did you post each month? My recommendation is at least two per month, at least two per month, if not four. Now, Minimum, if you're just getting going, one per month is a bare minimum. Two per month is a good rhythm. Four per month is when you're humming along and you're posting content regularly, you are also posting CTAs regularly. Notice that I'm very, um, these metrics are quite sophisticated already because notice I'm not tracking how many posts you're making, right? I'm not tracking how many blog posts you wrote or how many videos you wrote because that is already assumed. I'm already assuming you're already regularly posting things because that's where, that's where your post reach should go up each month. You see what I mean? And, and if, you're, if you're regularly posting things, that's why you wouldn't feel so badly about posting CTAs. Because if you never post content, 
and all you do is sell on social media, of course you look salesy to your audience. <laughs> and we don't want to look salesy to our audience. It's usually good 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of what you post online is content. You're just blessing people. You're ministering to them. You are sharing useful tips. You are sharing inspiration, interesting stories, etc. 20% of the time is a CTA, right? You're posting invitation. Hey, everyone, did you know that I'm a coach? Did you know that I help people with this? I know a lot of you don't know that. And a lot of you need to be reminded that I have a service. I'd love for you to sign up for it. Please contact me. Let's do a sample session just to kind of give you a sense of, of what, it, what I do, right? Because otherwise, how would you, how your friends know? Your friends forget the next month that you're a coach. Completely your friends forget. Every month your friends forget. Oh, he's such a nice person. He just posts articles sometimes. <laughs> your friends don't even think about what you do until you post it. And then they think about it for the next three days and then they forget again. So you have to post it every two weeks, right? Or invitation to subscribe to your newsletter. That's another CTA, right? A survey, what should you write about? <laughs> yeah. What topics did you, did you teach about, right? Those are all CTAs. And then collabs. How many collabs did you do per month? Um, I recommend that you do at least one collab per month. If you can do two collabs per month, that'd be great. If you could do four per month, that'd be amazing. But two a month is a good rhythm. One per month is a minimum. The simplest collab is to trade interviews with a friend. That's it. So maybe you have somebody in this program, that you know, this TLC program, that you are a new friend with them. Hey, can you reach out to say, hey, can we trade interviews? A collab is short for collaboration. It's a, it comes from YouTube's, YouTube influencer speak, Instagram influencer speak. It's a term in, uh, for in, among Instagram, uh, among influencers, a collab is uh, basically uh, you promoting each other, basically. Um, and the simplest way to promote each other is to interview each other. So, hey, can I interview you um, about your work? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes is fine. I get to ask you questions, be genuinely curious what you do for a living and ask you questions about what you know and uh, anything that's I'm genuinely curious about. I'm gonna interview you. You and I can post it to our audiences. And then how about you interview me too? You know? Now, you should do collabs with people who have a similar sized audience as you. So if anybody else here has 5,000 fans, <laughs> contact me. <laughs> or anywhere between 3,000 to 7,000 fans, contact me. I'd love to potentially do a collab with you. Yeah. So, all right. Um, that's it. So that's how we track how we're doing in our business, how, do we're, how are we moving forward. If we're moving forward in these ways, we can be sure our business is likely moving forward as well. All right, question here from Moitza is, do we, should we check in on these categories, these metrics once a month uh, or even on a weekly basis? So to keep things simple, I have this as a once a month to-do item to, to, to you know, update your numbers on this. But certainly when you are being active and by the way, you don't have to start with all seven. How many are there? Are there seven? Yeah. You don't have to start with all seven. You could start with one or two. And this is a perfect kind of a tool to work with an accountability buddy or, or a coach. It doesn't have to be a business coach. It could be a, you know, a, a coach that you hire just to keep you accountable on your overall you know, life and business relationships, et cetera. You could say, hey, coach, can I, uh, can I, can I just share this tool with you and I just want to get some help, just accountability. Please ask me about it and uh, coach me through some next steps for me to think about it. You know, they might not be a business expert, but you probably know more than them in some ways. And you, you can, at least they can help you brainstorm, you know? So feel free to do that, right? Okay. So have fun with this. And uh, if you want more info um, or, you know, kind of in-depth teaching, I mean, I think you've gotten enough here, but if you want to even go more, you can georgecow.com slash intro. Uh, georgecow.com slash intro is the, is the class for, 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 for this. All right. 